Salutations and good evening. Good evening. There you go. There we go. Okay. Thank you. It's a comedy night, folks. This is audience participation. Okay. <laughs> My name is Ben Dworkin. I am the director of the Rowan Institute for Public Policy and Citizenship, known as RIPAC. And I welcome you to RIPAC's almost annual mock academic debate between the eagle and the turkey. All right, all right. It, it, has been, it has been said, it has been said that Americans don't like knock-knock jokes because in America, we don't knock. In America, freedom rings. And with that, and with that ringing endorsement, we celebrate tonight by featuring a distinguished panel of academics. I'd like to just introduce them now. Please stand to be recognized when I say your name. Advocating on behalf of the turkey, we have the founding dean of the School of Earth and Environment, Dr. Ken Lacavara. He will be joined, he will be joined by a biomedical engineering major from the Rowan University class of 2022, Katie Driscoll. Advocating on behalf of the Eagle from the Rowan University Department of Philosophy and World Religions, Dr. Whitney Cox. <laughs> and she will be joined by computer science major from the class of 2022, Alex Mikarski. <laughs> the way this program will work is that each panelist will have about eight minutes to, or so to make their case. As should be expected in the freewheeling world of academic debate, nothing is off limits. You have been warned. If you have any desire to rush the stage and hit somebody, please don't. Just all we're gonna say. Once all four presentations are done, the debaters will all come up to the dais and we will read off some questions that have been submitted by those who registered online. The panelists will then have a chance to respond. In the end, we will pick the winner of this year's debate through the most unscientific measurement, the loudness of applause for each side. Please note, we are recording this historic event, and therefore we should all recognize that the entire program is completely on the record. And finally, while we ask that your cell phones be put on silent or vibrate, we encourage you, by all means, to engage in live tweeting and posting pics on pictures on Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. Please do so and reference hashtag Team Eagle, hashtag Team Turkey, hashtag Eagle Turkey 2022, and of course, hashtag RIPAC. So let us ask the opening question, why are we even here? Well, in 1837, President Andrew Jackson, nearing the end of his term, hosted a reception in the White House and opened it up to the masses, to the general public. And it featured a 1,400 pound block of cheese from which all could partake. 162 years later, the Emmy-winning show, The West Wing, featured a storyline in which the fictional White House Chief of Staff, inspired by President Jackson, opens the doors to his office for Big Block of Cheese Day. And he celebrates this day by arranging meetings between White House senior staff and members of the public who don't get enough attention, largely because they're seen as crackpots. Now, to be clear, the members of the public were seen as crackpots, not the White House staff. That distinction can sometimes be confusing. Thank you. Tonight, <laughs> Tonight, in the spirit of Andrew Jackson and Aaron Sorkin, we at RIPAC open the doors of our beloved Rowan University to the debate that also doesn't get enough attention. Tonight, we devote ourselves to the eternal question that has both plagued and befuddled America throughout its existence. The eagle versus the turkey, which is more American? It is a question that is both fair and foul. Fair and foul. 
It only gets better, folks. Just let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It is altogether fitting that we do this. The long and sordid history of April Fool's Day and its connection to American politics is, well, long and sordid. And it begins with the very founding of the American Republic, for it was on the 1st of April in 1789 that the United States House of Representatives held its first full meeting, electing a speaker and beginning its long journey into policymaking, delivery, and dysfunction. The irony of having the birth of the American Congress fall on April Fool's Day should not be lost on anyone. And thus we find ourselves here tonight, April Fool's Eve 2022. Let us recall the words tonight of the great William Shakespeare who wrote in his play Twelfth Night, those who are fools, let them use their talents. Tonight, some of Rowan's most talented fools will be on full display. Now, because there happens to be, <coughs> excuse me, because there happens to be an eagle on the American quarter, we no longer flip a coin to determine who goes first. No one wanted to be accused of monetary bias, and therefore I get to make an executive decision. So we will begin with the first speaker advocating on behalf of the turkey. Please welcome Hailing from Linwood, New Jersey, the founding dean of the Rowan University School of Earth and Environment, Dr. Ken Lakavar. All right. I have seriously got to get a better agent. Um, <laughs> But I actually heard that uh, on the way here, uh, I don't know why it doesn't have my picture. There we go. Um, <laughs> um, eagle. Um, eagle is more American than the turkey. Um. <laughs> Now that we are fully centered, we may begin. What a majestic birth. Fills the heart with delight. Inspires the mind. Lifts the senses. The eagle is a transcendent bird. The eagle is a noble bird. The eagle is an ennobling bird. We, right now, are all better people because of the eagle and because of what the eagle has given us, what the eagle shows us, how the eagle leads us forward into enlightenment. Calling now on the work of sociologist Emile Durkheim, who was himself much like an eagle. <laughs> We can see that eagles are not only decorative, though they are. Eagles are not only beautiful, though they are. But that eagles are also functional. Eagles are eminently functional. And the function that eagles show in America can be measured through Durkheim's model of the four functions of religion, which I shall now explain to you as embodied by the eagle. <laughs> Sociology. <laughs> Durkheim's four functions of religion. We shall look at each of them one, at, one by one and discuss how it is that the eagle embiggens all of us just by existing. The first function of religion, according to Emile Durkheim, is the disciplinary function. The disciplinary function of religion makes us better people. It teaches us, through religion, how to function better in the world. And what better to show this than the eagle? My example, these children, these beautiful Americans, 
children. Saying the Pledge of Allegiance, they hold so deeply in their hearts all those words that they know they do not understand, they do not think about them, but they know them. <laughs> and what is it that watches over these children? making sure they get all of their words right. That's right, it's the creepy eagle on top of the flag. That eagle disciplines them and makes sure that they get this all right. <laughs> Moving on. The section, function of religion, according to sociologist Emile Durkheim, is the cohesive function of religion. Religion brings people together, gives people a sense of unity, gives people a sense that, yeah, it's probably time to go to church. You, you overslept. You need to really get going. And nothing embodies this cohesion, this sense of belonging and togetherness better than the eagle as manifested in regrettable back tattoos. <laughs> Were these people in full and sober control of their faculties when they got these tattoos? Absolutely not. <laughs> Do they probably regret the choices that they made almost certainly every day? Are they going to admit to this regret? Absolutely not. And what is more American than making a poor decision and sticking by it? I tell you. The eagle. <laughs> the third function of religion is the vitalizing function of religion. The vitalizing function of religion is that religion gives us life. It makes us excited. It makes us excited to do things. But more than that, it keeps the community alive. The vitalizing function of religion, shown here, especially with this charming eagle belt buckle, is about passing things on to children, is about keeping the community alive, is about making sure that we all survive. And what needs more life in the United States than the economy? And what is better for the economy than Eagle March? <laughs> every single tchotchke, every single made in <clears throat> America piece of merchandise here tells us that truly we are American. And truly, someone is making a couple bucks off this. <laughs> off of this beautiful, majestic bird. <laughs> the fourth function of religion is the euphoric function of religion. Religion gives the individual soul wings. It lifts the individual above the everyday and assures you that you have a moral place in the universe and that your moral place in the universe is a correct one, is a good and noble one. America uplifts. <laughs> the eagle brings us all up like America swoops out into the rest of the world and clutches it in its claws and lifts it up on the wings of democracy. America soaring across the skies, finding beautiful young countries <laughs> and bringing them up, up higher and higher to, it, it, it's, it's probably going to be fine. <laughs> you know, he looks like he's having a good time. Yeah. Um, in conclusion. In conclusion, America is a land. It is a land of freedom. 
And that freedom is embodied by the eagle. When you think America, when you think America, think scary eagle watching you say the Pledge of Allegiance. Think permanent body scarification. Think all the little things you could buy on Amazon and have shipped to you tomorrow. <laughs> Think picking up strange and attractive young men. <laughs> Think the eagle. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cox. Our next speaker, a senior biomedical engineering major from Durango, Colorado. Please welcome Katie Driscoll. Hi, guys. Can I get a gobble? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Feeling better already? All right. <laughs> okay, so my name is Katie, and I am a senior biomedical engineering major. Um, and you might be wondering why I'm here talking to you about turkeys today. And honestly, I still am as well. Um, <laughs> nobody told me that this was supposed to be funny. Um, so everything I'm about to say is very, very serious. Uh, I'm very serious. I wear lab coats. I almost have a bachelor's, so. <laughs> All right, so as was mentioned, I am from Durango, Colorado. And growing up in rural Colorado, uh, turkeys were some of my best and only friends. I, <laughs> I had a firsthand view of how these incredible birds uh, interacted in nature, but I was not able to fully express this until well into my undergraduate studies, um, where I was able to combine my passion for engineering, historical research, and turkeys um, to fully appreciate the profound contributions that these special birds have made. Uh, as I learned more about how turkeys have shaped American innovation over the last two and a half centuries, I grew more and more outraged. Uh, I maintain that turkeys have been wrongfully and systematically written out of their place in American history. Being turkeys, they've been unable to speak for themselves, their half-hearted gobbles falling on deaf ears. Tonight, I will shed light on this obscured, forgotten corner of history through a series of case studies. Tonight, turkeys will be restored to their rightful place as America's bird. Tonight, I will speak for the turkeys. <laughs> All right, the first case study is likely a story you've heard before. In 1913, Henry Ford implemented the first full-scale assembly line to manufacture automobiles. This innovation is widely regarded as one of the most important engineering and manufacturing achievements, and Henry Ford himself is considered to be one of America's foremost engineers, having been inducted into both the automotive and aviation halls of fame. What we often neglect to mention about Henry Ford is that in addition to being a tremendous engineer, he was also a passionate environmentalist. While he vacationed in Georgia and Florida, he took time to extensively observe the wildlife around him. Henry Ford loved the turkey. A true scholar of their behavior, Ford was inspired by the natural collaboration that groups of wild turkeys exhibit. <laughs> turkeys work together in large family units, not unlike a modern assembly line, to complete a variety of tasks, including dinner preparation, the construction of rudimentary shelters, and the manufacturing of those pilgrim hats with the buckles. <laughs> I was <laughs> it was by watching turkeys work together that Ford conceived of using an assembly line to manufacture automobiles more efficiently. However, this influence was not unidirectional in nature. Indeed, by observing workers at the Ford factories, turkeys themselves learned to manufacture a variety of machines from spare parts, including entire Honda Civics. <laughs> the, next time, the next time you find yourself wondering, how did that get there, consider the turkey. Though in America we celebrate individual success and genius, our very country is built on the collaboration of the masses. What is more, America, more American than working together to conquer a goal? It is critical here to note that the bald eagle has never been known for its ability to collaborate on any scale, much less the scale required to represent the sheer productive capacity of the American people. In this way, the turkey is truly America's bird. All right, now let's aim our sights to the dunes of Kitty Hawk. We, we all know Orville and Wilbur Wright, but for many of you, this may be the first time you're hearing the name Bosco, and I'm here to write that wrong. Wilbur and Orville grew up in the Midwest, where the Eastern wild turkey is commonly kept as a household pet, livestock guardian, and parking garage attendant. 
Bosco was the Wright family pet and was beloved especially by Orville and Wilbur. The turkey would delight the boys by flying short distances and mastering the hula hoop. However, as Bosco aged, he suffered from severe arthritis and lost his ability to fly at all. Orville and Wilbur watched as the formerly lively Bosco became increasingly withdrawn, watching other birds soar from the window. Bosco's decline inspired the Wright brothers to take to the skies. Bosco was able to accompany the brothers to early flight tests, but died in 1902 before the brothers' quest for sustained flight could be completed. In 1905, the Bright brothers completed a flight test covering 20 and 3 quarter miles in 33 minutes and 17 seconds. Wilbur credited this incredible success to his feathered friend at the Kitty Hawk Times, stating, we did this for Bosco. <laughs> With Orville tearfully adding, let the world never forget, we did this for Bosco. <laughs> we didn't, Orville, and we won't. Where our last case study ended in tragedy, Miller Reese Hutchinson starts with it. The year is 1881, and little Tom Winger has just recovered from a severe bout of scarlet fever, which left him completely deaf. Seated next to Tom is his best friend Miller. The two boys hold their breath as the final event of the fair, their favorite, begins. Indeed, the annual turkey chorus of the All Fowl Corral has signified the tail end of regional celebrations across the South for decades. Miller sways to the opening refrains of clucks, cackles, and gobbles before noticing his friend is in tears, unable to enjoy the trills of 300 talented tur turkeys. It is at this moment that Miller vows to invent a hearing machine that would allow Tom to once again relish the stylings of the annual turkey chorus. Miller Reese Hutchinson went on to study the structure and function of the human ear alongside electrical engineering, making him one of the first biomedical engineers and used his expertise to develop the first functional electronic hearing aid. Today, we've refined Hutchinson's design, and the turkey choirs, turkey choirs remain a fixture of Southern culture. These choral events have failed to take off north of the Mason-Dixon, and attempts at all eagle ensembles have ultimately failed, with e eagles only able to hit an E in any octave. A true one-note performance. The final case study we will assess tonight is Garrett Augustus Morgan's invention of the three-position traffic light. Morgan grew up in Claysville, Kentucky, an area flush with wild turkeys. In the 1920s, the propagation of the automobile meant that it was not uncommon for pedestrians, cyclists, horse-drawn buggies, roller skaters, and indeed turkeys to, scare, to share road ra roadways all across America. Predictably, this early version of share the road left to a sharp increase in motorway accidents. In 1922, Morgan himself witnessed a dramatic turkey versus eagle collision. <laughs> Contrary to what has been said tonight, tar turkeys are well known to be responsible road users, with accidents involving deer, squirrels, raccoons, skunks, and other wildlife far exceeding the total number of turkey accidents in present day. However, in 1922, when Morgan witnessed that fateful accident, early traffic signals only had two positions, stop or go. Able to run at speeds of up to 35 miles an hour and unable to read or make sudden stops, it's no surprise that the otherwise responsible turkey found itself implicated in a number of traffic accidents. After witnessing the turkey collision, Morgan set his mind to improving roadway safety. He patented a traffic stop design with a tertiary warning signal. This solved the problem of the sudden stopping for motorists and turkeys alike. In a second stroke of genius, Morgan transitioned from written stop and go signs to the iconic tricolor scheme we use in traffic lights today. Turkeys are able to see a broad spectrum of colors far beyond what the human eye is capable of perceiving and are thus able to understand and obey traffic signals alongside human motorists. <laughs> Morgan's invention, inspired by the turkey, has saved millions of lives by improving roadway safety. All right, I hope that these case studies have illuminated <laughs> new aspects of our shared American history and convince you that to find America's bird, we need look no further than the turkey. Until tonight, you may have only pictured a turkey at the center of a Thanksgiving table, and you'd be right, they are, in fact, delicious. But in the future, I hope you can picture the turkey at the center of American industry and innovation. It's called range, and the turkey invented it. The question resulting from this discussion is what critical societal contributions have been made on behalf of the eagle? After all, it would have been easy to stand up here and talk about the turkey while just ignoring the equally important influence of the bald eagle. But I promise you, I looked high, low, and really high and found nothing to distinguish the bald eagle from any other bird. Is this really the animal you want representing America? I'll let you decide. So, batting cleanup. Thank you, first of all, Katie. Batting cleanup, our final debater of the night from Hamilton, New Jersey, a senior computer science major. Please wel welcome Alex Mikarski. In case you're wondering, wait, is this mic working? All right. 
In case you're wondering, is the Central Jersey Hamilton? Yes, we exist. Here's mine. All right. Here it is. So, all right. So the eagle is more American than the turkey. I've given you a mathematical perspective on this. I'm a bachelor. I'm a bachelor. I'm going to be a BS computer science in um, six weeks, and I'm also a math minor. And I wasn't to have a simulation prepared, but unfortunately, I spent a lot of time on it. But I actually did it on a computer. I did it on Linux and not Windows. And transferring it over is not very easy to do. Can't be done in the course of 30 minutes. So I have another thing I plan. I plan. I'm going to have to call customer service. <laughs> All right. Some historical accomplishments of the Eagle. We have one Super Bowl ring. <laughs> yes, it's great. Also, it's the highest rank of the Boy Scout. Still working on that. Also. <laughs> Up here, you see that? That's not a turkey, that's an eagle. See, we're the United States national bird. In fact, in 1940, we passed a law about it. <laughs> we passed a law where it is illegal to hunt bird, hunt eagles, legal to sell them, illegal to buy them. It's protected under the Bald and Golden Eagle Protection Act, passed in 1940. What law is there to protect turkeys? What, is there to pro what protection do turkeys have? They have a $20 price tag at every grocery store. <laughs> That's the protection they have. So that's mostly about, mostly some of the overviews about them. Now we're gonna do, I wanna do some math. I wanna do some math real quick. So I actually have some real data up here. I picked Dogecoin because it's the best one to represent it. I have to do billions of, because, because you, a lot of science majors, some engineering majors who you do science, you know about significant digits. I can't represent significant digits in US dollars, so I have to resort to Dogecoin. <laughs> so I want to do some, I'm going to actually, I'm going to do the turkey industry in billions because um, it's the easiest one to do with math. So I'm going to use some really powerful software I was able to get installed. Thanks you, thank you very much, Ashley, for helping me get this installed on your computer. <laughs> it's called Very Highly Advanced Mathematical Software. <laughs> if you know this guy from Monsters University, he's probably one of the greatest professors I've ever had. You can look him up. Yes, he's a five-star review. I have to actually get this so I can remember the numbers. All right. So let's do some basic averages. <laughs> I can't read that small. Is that better? Yeah. All right. OK. All right. I have to figure this out. I didn't get training on this, so it's going to be a little bit sloppy. 5.98 plus 5.98 plus 5.88 plus 5.82. Take this, and we're going to get the thing out again. Divide this <laughs> by four. Using my other very advanced software that actually helped me get on this computer. Five point nine hundred fifteen billion. Amount of dollars spent in the industry. That's the turkey industry. What about the eagle industry? Zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus four. According to the laws of arithmetic, zero divided by four is always zero. Or zero divided by anything is always zero. So it was really zero Dogecoin. I'm not going to do the bottom two because I want, to, I want this to be a fun presentation. I don't want it to be a math lecture. 
In that case, you'd go to either Robinson or James Hall. <laughs> All right. So, how much time do I have left? <laughs> All right. So I got a while. All right. So what else do I have to show you about the deal in Turkey? I'm going to pull up some literature. Because if you've seen, the Holy Bible has a lot of verses about the eagle. We got Book of Samuel, Book 1, verse 23. Saul and Jonathan, in life, they were loved and admired, and in death, they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles, not turkeys, eagles. And they were stronger than lions. Think about it. Think about how eagles are described back then. What literary? Like, how are they described with the lit, with the literary stuff? I don't know. I, I didn't do well in the English SAT, but <laughs> I'm going to show you another statistic. So I got the statistics. I'm actually one of. I'm thinking about going for an MBA or a master's in economics. I really like economics, and I want to be an entrepreneur in the future. And it's really going to help me on that route. So, so the, there are six states that produced the most turkey. A lot of turkey production plants, because eagles don't have production plants. Eagles' production plants are in federal prison. <laughs> Number one is Minnesota at 19.4 million. Number two, North Carolina, 17.2 million. And number three, Arkansas, Indiana, Missouri, and Virginia. In fact, I was in Virginia last weekend. It actually was. Actually, it was a camping trip we went on with the Outdoors Club, and it was a really nice trip. Unfortunately, I came back with a speeding ticket. <laughs> if it's speed limit's 30, you don't go 55. All right. That's mostly what I have, all I have to show you guys about, eagle, about why the eagle is superior. All right, I'm going to give Dr. Dworkin the mic. All right. <laughs> all right, thank you. Let's give a round of applause for our four debaters. <laughs> I'd like to invite all of the panelists to come up at this time. <laughs> there we go. All right. We are now opening it up to questions that have been submitted when people registered online uh, by you, our lovely audience. Thank you so much. And the questions will be uh, responded to. Um, we'll just try not to talk over each other. The first question that was submitted. <laughs> one of the this was what this was what was written one of the questions that divides Americans today is concern over immigration and borders what is your opinion on these matters eagles have no borders shh, 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 we need it eagles yeah. have no borders eagles <laughs> anybody else well i would say that um you know, it's, it's immigration and diversity that makes us strong. So I'm, like an I'm very much in favor of immigration, but legal immigration. Legal rhymes with eagle. Eagles just go across the border <laughs> with no concern for immigration law, do they? Turkeys, on the other hand, just walk. They really never go anywhere. Oh. Freedom. <laughs> OK. <laughs> uh, the second question that came was submitted Quote, each of these two birds has been afforded, on some level, public housing. What can you suggest to make housing more accessible and affordable to all, especially for those who don't have their own nest egg? Take it from the turkeys. Take it away from the turkeys, okay. Anybody else? To make it more accessible for the eagle, I mean, NASA could um, have it, could get their own. Your turkeys can't fly high enough. NASA could build like a little altitude space station for eagles. 
Well, if I could speak for the uh, turkeys, I would say that we need to tax the high flyers a little bit more mm. so those on the ground have a place to live. Eagles fly really high because so you want to avoid you turkeys. <laughs> All right. To this. Else? All right. And now, uh, third question. We have four of them. Uh, even, here's what this person wrote, uh, even with an amazing, and I mean really amazing degree from Rowan University. Ah, uh, yes, I am still worried about getting a job after I graduate. Does the eagle or the turkey do more for the economy? I think Alex demonstrated really well how well the, the turkeys contribute to the American economy. What was it, like $5 billion or something like that? So. I mean, the turkeys die for the economy. <laughs> because That's we what would said. all die for our country. <laughs> I don't want to cut off anybody. We have an economy based off dead turkeys, not dead eagles. The eagles run the country. The eagles run the economy. The, the, dead, the dead turkeys run the economy. Living turkeys have no, have no price. The eagles also have a stadium. I think we only have to look to the words of our opponent to see the economic impact that eagles have on the economy. And what was the, uh, that turkeys have on the economy? How many Super Bowl rings do the turkeys what was, have? Uh, <laughs> what was the impact of the you have, uh, eagle? You have, less playoff, wins than Dallas, you have less playoff wins than the Dallas Cowboys had over the last 20 years. <laughs> All right. I wasn't a math major, but I believe that zero divided by zero divided by zero divided by zero. <laughs> it's undefined. <laughs> Isn't very much. Touche, Dr. Ragerath. <laughs> Let us move on to our fourth and final question. Does either side have what it takes to help mend the partisan divide in Washington? Please explain. The Eagles will see everything you do. <laughs> we will see, we'll be able to see the issues people are having. We'll be able to see it. Eagles, turkeys can't see anything because turkeys have such a low, have such a low vision. They, they don't have, because they're so close to the ground. They can't see much stuff in front of them. Eagles can fly really high, and they can, they can see the horizon. And that helps mend the partisan divide. It helps the partisan divide, because the eagles are watching. The okay. eagles will help the partisan divide, so that's what eagles do. Okay. Turkeys fundamentally believe in collaboration. They range in troops. They do everything in large groups. I think that we should always look to the turkey versus the eagle when considering issues of partisan divide because the eagle is really more of a lone wolf and what gets done on your own when you could have a team. Okay. I think we could just all come together and eat the turkeys. <laughs> but that would still be the turkeys healing the partisan divide. <laughs> and, and making good stock, yes, but <laughs> yes. That's so eagle. <laughs> okay. Let us thank our four panelists. <laughs> Do what they can. Ladies and so here we have come to the conclusion. So ladies and gentlemen, mesdames and messieurs, students who I required to be here and students who just wanted to be here, a decision must be made. And so I ask you on the question before us, which is more American by applause? Who favors the eagle? Eagle, 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 eagle. And, and now, by applause, who favors the turkey? The turkeys hired people. The turkeys have, the turkeys have enough money to hire people to do to do for them. I'm sorry, our equipment wasn't working. We have to do that again. So now, by applause, <laughs> who favors the eagle? Yeah! Yeah, okay. And who favors the turkey? By the ruling of the judge, and that's me, um, I now get to channel my best drawn out end of American Idol and the end of this debate. The 2022 sort of annual 
RIPAC April Fool's Eve mock academic debate between the eagle and the turkey over which is more American has resulted in a win for the turkey. <laughs> fellow colleagues, let, let us conclude by fellow colleagues, students, and members of the public, much like the beginning of the baseball season, last season's record means nothing. So wait till next year when everyone starts on opening day in first place, even the Eagle. And so, on behalf of the Rowan Institute for Public Policy and Citizenship and Rowan University, I invite all of you back next year when we will have a chance to continue this most worthwhile discussion. On a more serious note, tonight we are also seeking to assist the shop, our Rowan-based food pantry. Food insecurity is a significant threat to student success on college campuses across the nation and we are no different here at Rowan with our 23,000 students. Thank you all who have made a donation at one of the tables in the lobby. Let me also suggest that if you are looking to grab a bite to eat, then by all means, please take advantage of the discounts offered by several restaurants on Rowan Boulevard just down the road. I want to thank all of the Rowan students and staff who helped make tonight possible, and especially our four participants. Let's give another round of applause. Dr. Lacavara, Dr. Cox, Ms. Driscoll, Mr. Rikarski. Please allow me, just, uh, allow me to just conclude with this one point. We host tonight's event because in politics, it's important to remember to laugh. People do politics because it's fun. As a wise entertainer once said, when people are laughing, they are generally not killing each other. And you know, that's a good thing. So thank you everyone, have a wonderful night and a safe trip home. We'll see you next year at the annual Eagle Turkey Debate. Thank you all.